there are a few options for delivering your content. And it doesn't really matter if you're if you're recording your videos or you're presenting them live. The principles, well, they're pretty much the same. You could go direct to camera like this, like what I'm doing now. Or you could use a, a slide deck and then narrate over your slides. In this video, I'm gonna cover using slides. Direct to camera, that requires it requires a lot more moving parts. And I've already created a lot of YouTube content covering getting set up for direct to camera. And I'll be covering a lot more for those of you who want to know to deliver your content direct to camera. So be sure you hit that little bell and subscribe. Anyway, presenting with a slide deck. First, before you start to build your slides, make sure that you've got them, your slides, in the right format, the right aspect ratio, if we're using the right terminology. If you're using PowerPoint, open your slide deck go to page settings and just make sure it's set to 69. If you're a Keynote user in Keynote, that is a Mac only app, but in Keynote from the document tab here on the right, make sure the slide size is widescreen 169. Whatever you're using to create your slides, make sure it's in the right format before you start building out your slides. If it's not on the right aspect ratio, you're gonna have black bars. Or even worse, some of your slide, it might not even be on the screen. Now, when it comes to presenting with slides, what really kills retention? Well, actually, there's a, a few things that kill retention. But the biggest mistake I see is too much text on each slide. You want to be changing your slides often. And I mean, like every 10 or 15 seconds or so to keep your audience watching. So go light on the text and just use more slides. Oh, and don't go just repeating yourself on the slide word for word. Look at the slides like a, like a headline, something to add value to your, to your narration. If you just repeat yourself on the slides, your audience, well, they're just going to read it. And since they can read faster than you can speak, they're going to constantly be waiting for you to finish. Your slides, they need to add value, not remove it. And you don't want your slides to be boring. You've got to be creative when you're creating your slides. So use images, use graphics, different fonts, colors. Now, if design, if it isn't your thing, if you're not, say, the creative type, you could then just create really basic slides and then find a designer on Upwork or, or Fiverr to, to dress them up. Or you could open a Canva account and use that. Now, Canva, in case you don't know, Canva is like... It's like Photoshop for dummies, and there's loads of pre-built templates you can use, tons of fonts, and they've also got millions of really good stock images. And it's, it's something like $15 a month. It's super cheap. In fact, when you work it out, just for the stock images you can download, it's a no-brainer. Equipment-wise for presenting with slides, it's, it's really low budget when you compare it to shooting direct-to-camera like this. For slides, you really don't need much. If you started out, I might like this Blue Yeti USB mic. That's a great starting point. But a couple of things when using a mic. Most people, they buy a mic and then they stick it on the desk and away they go. And yes, you can. But if you spend just a few extra dollars, you can make a big difference to the quality of your audio. First, you don't want to mount a mic directly on your desk ever. Every tap on your keyboard, click on your mouse, every time you touch the table, you're going to hear a thud through the mic. That's why you should have a mic arm like this. And besides that, mounting your mic on an arm has got some really important benefits. You see, to get clean audio, that nice rich sound, the proximity of to your mouth, that's important. All mics, they've got a sweet spot, an ideal distance from your mouth where the audio sounds rich but isn't distorted. Most people, they have the mic too far away and it sounds thin. But if you move it too close, it sounds muffled. On the Yeti, the sweet spot is about a hand's width from your mouth, or about four to five inches. Having a stand like this makes it easy to move the mic into the perfect position without it getting in your way. Currently, I'm using a shotgun mic. It's just out of shot up here. But when I'm using a, a mic on a boom arm, I like to position it just off access like this. What this does, it cuts down the amount of air that's hitting the mic as you talk. And also it's not in my way, I can see what I'm doing. And secondly, the next bit of kit that makes a big difference is a shock mount. You absolutely need a shock mount. 
this fits between the stand and the mic. It absorbs all the knocks and the bangs. Another bit of kit that you'll need is a pop filter. What these do, they stop the air hitting the mic, which causes pops and plosives on the audio. <laughs> Hence the name, pop filter. They just fasten to the arm and then it sits in front of the mic. Now some mics, they're top address mics, like this Procaster mic here. You talk into the top of it. But others, like the Yeti, they're side address mics and you talk into the side. So before you set your mic up, find out where you should be positioning it. Now the other thing, some mics, like this Yeti, they have different recording modes. On the back here, there's a switch with these different symbols. These are the different pickup patterns. If you're doing narration, you want to make sure it's set to the little heart-shaped icon, that's cardioid. That's the best setting when you're doing a voiceover. And of course, when you use it, make sure that the mic is the right way around. When you've got your mic all connected up, before you start to record, you're going to need to set the input volume. Now on the Yeti, there's an obia, and it's called gain. Now, there are some technical ways you can set the volume of your mic. But there's an easy way. It's a little rough and ready, but it works. Now, any audio geeks listening to me are going to totally freak out of me here, but here's the quick and dirty way. Open up YouTube and find a video with an audio expert, like this guy, Curtis Judd, who's actually a very good friend of mine. Now, these guys are going to be spot on with their audio levels. Set your headphone volume so when you listen, it's comfortable, and then do a test recording of your own. Or when you play it back, you want it to be at a, a comfortable level, the level you use when you was listening to the YouTube video. This gives you a ballpark reference. Make sure your, your levels are something like. Now lastly, let's talk about software. Which software is best to record your presentation? Let me tell you, there's no shortage of options here. I could list at least 20. You could use Zoom. Now, I know Zoom is normally known for live presentations, but you can actually record from it if you wanted. So you could record your, your screen with Zoom. And then there are free options, apps like PowerSoft Screen Recorder, which actually does a pretty good job. It's simple to use and it works on PC and Mac. I'll, I'll put a link below. Now, if you wanted something a little more robust, something where you can add a little bit of polish to your content, there's Camtasia. Camtasia also contains a video editor that's easy to use. And it comes with some really cool effects that you can jazz up your presentation. You can present your slides. You can put a picture in picture over your slides if you wanted. I do like Camtasia, but like I said, it's a paid app. I think it's a, a one-off payment of $250. Now, two other options that I wanted to mention are Ecamm and OBS. Now, Ecamm is a Mac-only option, and I think it's about $16 a month. But OBS is free, and that works on PC or Mac. But there's a little bit more of a learning curve than with Ecamm. Now, both of these options, their prime focus is for delivering live content for streaming. A lot of YouTubers use these. That said, both Ecamm and OBS have the ability to also record video, and they both do a pretty good job. And if you're going to be doing, say, webinars or live streaming at some point, these may be an option. But neither of these has a built-in editor. Well, there you go. That's the basics for setting up for recording your slide deck. I hope you found it useful. So until next time, bye for now.